This program is made possible by friends and partners of Apostle Arome Osai, Remnant Christian Network Ministry. God bless you as you join us. Until you have spiritual knowledge, you cannot, you cannot participate effectively in spiritual warfare. Everything in the spiritual plane is supported by spiritual knowledge and the purpose of the unction that is a support structure, an administrative structure around the anointing on a man's life is so that he can have access to the knowledge that is handed out by the Spirit of God at the spur of the moment so that you know what to do and how to get it done. And when you, you follow the knowledge that you get by the anointing, then the power of the anointing opens up. It's time to rebel against the devil. When he comes to you and tells you, you are, you are a failure in ministry, you cannot amount to anything. He's telling you the opposite because he lies as his native language. Is it Satan that spoke to you that made you lose your sleep? Is it because somebody spoke to you and you took his words like the word of God? Grow up because where you are going in life, many imposters will come and speak in the name of God just to get you distracted. That's one of the avenues of the devil's work, but you need to come out. You know how much power is available to you. You not give up easy. We fight to see the reality of that which God has spoken. And as long as it is yet to come to pass, we will fight. A minute or two. Because this is your night. It's a day of appointment, a moment of appointment. God is about to deep the skills. There is something about your destiny that has to do with God is what God is about to unleash. God is about to do something strange. God put heaven on notice I am here do not pass me by put heaven on notice make demands on the presence of God make demands on the anointing of the spirit do not pass me by I know you have a package you have something that you are here to administer you have something that you are here to distribute the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost that the cloven tongues of fire appeared on the every one of them. Everyone had his own portion. There is an allocation for you tonight, and you can make demands on it. You can make demands on heaven. I am present. I am here. I'm here. 
here for an encounter. I'm here for a touch from your spirit. Do not pass me by. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And so we ask tonight that it might please you to stretch forth your hand over the people that are gathered before your presence and those that are participating online. Touch everyone at the point of their need. Make unto yourself a great name and be magnified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Please welcome your neighbor as you take your seat. God bless you. I just want to do briefly what I call the definition of terms. In the kingdom of God, when God is pleased to set a man up as a representative uh, of that layer of reality, there are a few things he does to such a functionary. The first among the numerous things that God does is that he anoints the man. The first thing is the anointing. Now, the Bible saying in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The traditional meaning of anoint means to smear upon. When you wake up in the morning and you visit the bathroom, you come out dry. And so you need to anoint yourself with something. And if you're like me, you use Nivea, Nivea. And I'm not a marketer for that product, but it works for me, Nivea. And when you anoint yourself with Nivea and you're walking around, your body will be oozing with the power, the perfumery, of, of Nivea scent. All right, so when God anoints you with the Holy Ghost, when he anoints you with power, it, it is not that you change. It is just that the substance with which you are anointed begins to manifest its strength. It's a deposit from God. Uh, and, and it's not only God that gives deposits. There are also deposits from the enemy. One of uh, the traditional rulers in among my people, among my tribe, he doesn't visit people because he normally travels with an entourage, a spiritual entourage. And if a, a pregnant woman looks upon him, she will lose the, the baby instantly because he is anointed with something. He's demonic. And as he moves around, uh, the power of what he's anointed with begins to salute the people in the environment. Now, Jesus had a ministry of philanthropy because the Bible says that he went about doing good. The Greek word good is the word from whence the English word philanthropy was derived. It means that because of the deposit that was upon Jesus, he could not sit in one place. And what we call the ministry of Jesus are the things that he did under the anointing in natural life circumstances. Because Jesus did not have a platform. Jesus did not have a pulpit. And what we call his ministry was the result of the things that happened just because he moved around and the anointing, the fragrance of the anointing that he carried performed several things consistent with the nature, the measure, and the power of what was at work on his life. For instance, if there is a, a, a burial ceremony and people are singing songs of sorrow, a, a long procession of mourners, Jesus will just show up, he will trace the procession to where the coffin is, and he will touch it. He went about. He would go into the market. He had no pulpit. So there's no place to come for Wednesday service. There's no place to come for Thursday service. He just mingles among carpenters. And then he finds someone that is crippled. And he touches him. And the power and the fragrance of that with which and by which he was anointed goes to work. That is the kingdom of God trying to capture and to catch the attention of a generation. And if God wants to capture the attention of a generation, what he does is that he finds someone and he anoints him. And then the ministry of philanthropy that Jesus was involved in continues through the life and the ministry of that fellow. So it is not the guy that is a superstar, it's the anointer that is a superstar. If we check this golden scripture which gives us 
the coordinates of an anointing and its performance, its function, and its operation, you will find that when God anoints a man, hallelujah. For those of you that read biochemistry, there's biochemistry in this scripture. You can see biochemistry there. All right, you see, when you, are, when you have typhoid fever, the organism that is responsible for typhoid is called salmonella. Salmonella paratyphi. And if we take a sample and we bring it into the microbiology lab and we develop a culture, an environment where salmonella can grow, when it has prospered in the culture, what we do in biochemistry is that we introduce the drugs. We introduce amoxil in one of the petri dishes. We introduce um, ciprofloxacin in another one. We introduce chloramphenicol in another one. Then we go and come back the next day. You will notice that the one that amoxil was introduced to his potency in destroying salmonella was, well, yeah, it, it, it's doing something, but it's slow. You check the one for chloramphenicol, and it, it's entirely burnt off. The, and everything is burnt off. You check the one for cipro, cipro, fluxacin. Then you see that it has, it's stronger than amoxil, but it's not as strong as chloramphenicol. So when you are prescribing, you now say, um, amoxil has... Strength, one. Cipro has strength, two. Um, what? Chloramphenicol has strength, three. But the doctors will normally say, start from amoxil. Start from the small one so that it doesn't shake your liver. The same thing is happening here. The Bible... Are you, are you with me? <laughs> you are not with me. <laughs> He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Then he went about doing philanthropy and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. It means that the anointing has plus three effect on oppression. If it's oppression, it is, it is, it is potency. <laughs> His potency for oppression is high. He went about doing good. There were diverse forms of philanthropy that he did, but when he came to oppression, he healed all. There was an intensity on the matter of oppression. Just in case you came here tonight oppressed, some demons have been chasing you in the dream. You, when you wake up, you want to say Jesus, you say, The anointing has super potency for oppression in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know, but our God hates oppression with passion. And the antidote that he has made available to tackle oppression with hyper capacity, hyper potency, super power is called the anointing. One thing about the anointing is that when you become anointed, you cannot stay in one place. I was fasting to a desk in the oil industry in my country. I was good at what I did. I loved figures. I loved numbers. We functioned as, as um, engineers, offshore, onshore, at the depots, on the sites. We are experts of fiscalization. I like what I do. It's demanding. It's tasking, mentally tasking. But I was fasting to my seat. Oh, my God. And then the anointing came. I will escape during the weekend and cast a few devils and come back and the anointing. Hallelujah. I was trying to manage the anointing on the seat, but I will escape. Nobody knows I've escaped. I, I use the anointing to know whether the road is clear. I, the, the same anointing, I, I use it. Ah, it's clear. I move. I've moved. I've, I've used all kinds of transport, the waterways, the road, and the air. Anyone is an option. Because when the anointing comes upon you, you become mobile. But on Sunday night, 12 midnight, 2 a.m., I must sneak back into Lagos. I, I must be on my seat. 
on the 16th of August, 2019. I was going, I sneaked again. And I was in a city called Uyo. And when I entered my hotel room, Jesus began to speak to me. He said, I've come to set you free so that where I am, there also will my servant be. It, it, there are dimensions of anointing you have that Jesus needs to free you. Your job can become a chain. Your, your high paid job, I was paid high, but it became a fetter. It became something from which I needed deliverance. Because when the anointing comes upon you, you have no choice but to go about. Uh, you, uh, oh my God. You go about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. The final thing you need to know about the anointing is that God will not anoint you in such a way that you don't need him to operate it. So he has to follow you around to operate it. The, the thing has high pressure, high temperature. He is the mechanic that goes around an anointed man operating. So he determines what measure comes out per time. You might be expecting that you raise the dead and he only heals headache and saves people. <laughs> and the day you say, I didn't pray enough and there's no scripture and you just sluggishly come to the pulpit. Ah, that's the day. That's the day even handkerchiefs that come from your body can heal the afflicted because it is God working with you operating the anointing on your life if someone is genuinely anointed it is something that that um, endears God to you it makes God around to come around you uh, because there's an investment on your life through which he can continue his ministry of philanthropy and so he wants to be around you to regulate you and one of the proofs that the anointing is at work in your life is that the anointing has capacity to teach. It is instructive. It has an educational pavilion that it ushers you into. How many of you have read the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 20? Please help me. 1 John 2, 20. 1 John 2, not 3. 2, T-W-O. But he have an unction from the Holy One and he know all things. Now the unction that you have received from the Holy One gives you access to what we call spiritual knowledge. Such knowledge that you are not taught about. Such knowledge that you cannot learn. It is knowledge that is handed out to you as a gift from the Spirit of Christ. Meanwhile, the unction, an unction the unction we are talking about is a knowledge faculty. You see, you don't need to teach a dog how to back. The dog has a knowledge faculty that educates it about backing. You don't need to teach a teacher, someone called to teach the Bible. You don't need to teach him how to teach. There is an unction capacity that is bequeathed to him from whence his education about teaching takes place. You don't need to teach a healing evangelist how to heal. Because embedded in the anointing is a knowledge faculty. We have an unction from what? The Holy One. And we know all things. Next verse. Oh. Uh, go to 19 first. 19. Ah. Uh, no. If I start from here, some of you will be confused. Go back to your 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. This unction, it's a knowledge faculty. All right? So you don't need to teach a prophet how to prophesy. There is an unction that supports a prophetic anointing. First of all, the unction will switch on. And when the unction switches on, then you begin to receive what is called spiritual knowledge. The proof that an anointing is at work is that uh, there is a teaching, an on-site teaching uh, that takes place inside. The teaching I'm talking about is spiritual. It's handed out to you. You can't learn it. You see, before I came out today, the unction switched on, and the unction began to teach me what to say before you. You know you are big people. You are mighty people. 
I can't just come and stand before you. You are not looking for a good spokesman. You, 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 you have, um, when, do they, when do they broadcast your news in Ghana, national news? 7, 7 p.m. <laughs> Every day, 7 p.m., there are people that know how to talk that are saying something. And if you have met a doctor before, he studied for six years. If you go there, he will say something about you. He will take his equipment up, touch here, touch here. Then he will say, laparotomy. <laughs> you have an answer. It's built into the deposit through which you can have access to spiritual knowledge. And until you have spiritual knowledge, you cannot deal with a spiritual thing. Until you have spiritual knowledge, you cannot, you cannot participate effectively in spiritual warfare. Everything in the spiritual plane is supported by spiritual knowledge. And the purpose of the unction that is a support structure, an administrative structure around the anointing on a man's life is so that he can have access to the knowledge that is handed out by the Spirit of God at the spur of the moment so that you know what to do and how to get it done. And when you, you follow the knowledge that you get by the anointing, then the power of the anointing opens up. And God begins to do through your life what you don't have the capacity to do as a mortal, but it's the anointing that is made upon you that confers that ability. Please help me tell your neighbor, you have an unction. Oh, you, that was dry. That was dry. Even say, oh my, oh my, oh my. You have an unction. The guy did not say you are about to have an unction. He didn't say you are going to have an unction. He said what? He said you have. You have an unction. You have an unction. There is so much that your pastor can teach you. There's so much that a preacher can tell you. But a preacher cannot tell you what the unction will tell you. The scope of education that a pastor, a preacher, brings to you is different from the scope of education that the unction brings to you. You have an unction. Once upon a time, I just came back from a very long trip, and uh, there was this lady. Uh, she wanted me to see her daughter because she was going to get married, and she wanted me to bless her. And that, I felt that was, that was good. That was okay. That was kind. And uh, we waited for this, her daughter, to come. And the moment she came, the unction switched on. And I saw that she had 14 days to die. Uh, and she was showing me someone that was going to marry. But I was seeing someone that was going to die. You have what? An unction. There is spiritual knowledge that is facilitated on, on the basis of the unction. Oh, my God. Please help me tell your neighbor again. You have an unction. I saw a lady on her way to die, and I told her, her mom, this one is about to die, and she didn't believe me. I said, all right, uh, to make this death visible to you, the unction now taught me, if you want to make the death visible, uh, ask her to look into your eyeballs, and she looked into my eyeballs, and the spirit of death that was upon her reacted. And you know what? This black, I don't know what it's called, the black part of your eye, and this, okay, there's no... No ophthalmologist here to give us perspective. There's one black thing inside of your eye. That's the thing I'm talking about. That thing, that thing went up. So all that was left was white. And she fell and was in that state for 35 minutes. The woman that brought someone to be blessed for marriage, the prayer point changed. <laughs> Tell him again, you have an answer. <laughs> if all you know is what you studied in the University of Ghana, the master's degree that you bagged from Kumasi. You are incapable of handling spiritual things. For spiritual things, you need spiritual knowledge. And that knowledge is sourced in an unction. It's a knowledge faculty that is spiritually built to cater for spiritual things. And it is from thence that spiritual knowledge is handed out. If you see a man that is vast in the spirit, it means his unction is updated. The unction is like a software. Time and again, it is updated to capture different scopes of things, to capture different types of things, to capture different situations, to capture different circumstances. I, I, I hope that your unction is not, 
is not out of date. It still carries the temperature and the nomenclature that you had the day you gave your life to Christ. <laughs> it means you will be incapable of handling some matters. May the Lord cause us to grow in the unction. Just like, just like someone in primary school is, is, is in school, someone in kindergarten is in school, someone in secondary school is in school, someone in the university undergraduate is in school, someone in, in master's, doing a master's program is in school, someone doing a PhD is in school, someone doing postdoc is in school. The unction, the vocabulary is supposed to grow as you begin to interface with Jesus, as you begin to interface with him, the scope, the dimension. There are times that you will have encounters with God and God will send you some. We say from now, you will do deliverance. The nomenclature of deliverance was not part of your unction. If issues that pertain to deliverance comes, you, are, you blank out. The, the letters, the, some, some letters are missing in the alphabet. You know A, you know B, you know C, you know D, you know, that's all. If it enters Z, P, you become confused because your unction level is low. As you navigate with Jesus, he gives you more vocabulary. He gives you more spiritual knowledge. He, he makes you competent for greater tasks, for more sensitive adventures. But you must go about. Because there's a business of philanthropy that God wants you to accomplish. So the first thing God gives a kingdom man that has received approval from him is that he begins to trust him with measures of the anointing. Anointings have different types. There are two variables that we must consider when we talk about the anointing. The first variable is the type of the anointing. And then the second variable is the measure of the anointing. The third variable is the channel of the anointing. There's a type, then there's a measure, and then there's a channel. Now, you will notice that the anointing that was upon Elijah, for instance, was the same anointing upon Elijah, but it was in a higher measure. When you see the same anointing in a different measure, in a higher measure, for instance, it has capacity to do much more than it would do in a lower measure. Sometimes what you need is not a new anointing. What you need is a higher measure of the same anointing that you have. The second thing that we must understand is that the anointing manifests through different channels. You might have the gift of word of knowledge, for instance, and the channel of the manifestation of the gift of word of knowledge that you have might be open visions. It can be dreams. It can be through the inner voice. It can be through the inner witness. It can be through the knowing of revelation. These are different channels, but it's the same gift. You are not with me. Well, because you are not with me, we will uh, channels. God is a God of variety. And God decides what channel, what, what channel he gives you. Someone, I, I saw, I saw um, a friend of mine when I went to do my youth service somewhere in northern Nigeria. He is a seer. And before that time, I don't see visions. Um, I walk with the inner voice. That's the channel God gave me. But he's a seer. And because his own manifestation was different, I thought he was false. Until I went back to the scripture, and I found seers in the Bible. Ooh. Then I knew he was a prophet. But his channel was different. And there were so many revelations that came through that brother and helped us to outsmart devils, demons. He was so competent in the area of deliverance. Are you with me? My area was healing, but his area was deliverance. He can see demons. He can see. He said, This one is like, oh, this is how this one is. This. I said, Why are you seeing it? It's a different channel. Hallelujah. After one year that we ministered together, then I began to see. And I started growing in sight. But it's the same gift, just a different channel just opened up. So you need to understand your uniqueness in the template that God makes available in your life, and then you, be, you need to become competent in the use of that channel. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, if we had time, I would have given you a little, some advice, some tips, so that you can be accurate within the scope of the channel 
that God has made available to you. Because the anointing has to flow through a certain tributary and it is the Holy Spirit that decides what tributary he makes available to you in keeping with your uniqueness, your calling, your context, your location, and your assignment. The second thing that God gives a man of the kingdom that he wants to begin to use for sensitive issues is that he makes a mantle available to him. I, I need to tell you the difference between an anointing and a mantle. A mantle is a spiritual garment. It's a spiritual garment. You see, those days, um, in order for a priest to function, there were very specific garments that he, need, he needed to put on in order for him to enter into several places within the courts of the temple as he administers his line of ministry. Uh, there were very detailed descriptions of how his tunic and his regalia should look like. But all those things in the Old Testament are types and shadows of things within the, the context of the reality, which is what we have in Christ Jesus. The Old Testament is very powerful because it gives you graphic illustrations of intangible spiritual things that we are managing and administering right now under the uh, economy of the grace of God. So when you understand it graphically, you will know what it takes for you to yield more perfectly to God and so that you can handle the utensils of the grace of God that he makes available to you. A good example of a mantle is what um, Elijah experienced in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. Just in case, ooh, you see, the anointing is teaching me now. Let me tell you a story before I read um, 1 Kings chapter... Hey, my time is almost up. Once upon a time, I, I was in the place of prayer. And uh, the Lord began to give me insight. He said, the first office that I trained you is the office of a teacher. And you must have discovered that I'm strongest in that office. After a long time, the Lord opened the office of a prophet to me. And he said, if you want to migrate, this is me, it will not work for you. All right? This is what the unction taught me. It's good to know. It's a testimony. But it, will, it won't necessarily work for you because you will need the unction to direct you as a specific individual in the plan of God. So I was trained by a teacher, and I was trained to function in the office of a teacher. I used to teach Sunday school, and I like teaching Sunday school. People normally come early to church because they want to meet my session. And that was a privilege that God gave me. So I thought I was a teacher until I had an encounter with Jesus. So I've called it to be an apostle. And I'm going to open the faculties of other scopes of anointings that are peculiar to other offices apart from the office that you are used to, which is your teaching office. You will operate like an evangelist effectively. You will operate like a prophet effectively. And these are teachings from where? From, oh, this my class is not. <laughs> oh, my God. I think uh, what is going on here is what Jesus spoke about. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. <laughs> Seems you can't bear it. You, you can't. All right. So, uh, he began to teach. That's, it's, it, 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 I know you have a pastor, but you need to learn how to hear Jesus. There are so many specific things that pertain to your calling, pertain to your ministry, pertain to the workings of the grace that God has made available to you that your pastor can never know. It will be a product of your intimacy with Jesus Christ. And Jesus began to tell me that if you, if you are teaching, because the teaching anointing is very domineering, it's very possessive, and when you begin to teach, you don't remember any other thing. But he said, if you want to migrate from the teaching office, you want to migrate into the prophetic office so that your hearing and your sight can open up. He told me what to do. It's the unction that is teaching me. I'm, I'm teaching you what the unction taught me. He said, he said get a misrayer and let the person begin to play softly. When the mystery begins to play, you'll be, at, at first, you'll be hearing the sound. 
Then when you yield, the sound is going to make you yield. The moment you begin to yield, and you yield to the place where I am, then I will make you to be able to perceive the activities of the angels that work with you. And through the whispers, the signs that the angels will bring to you, you will see and hear like a prophet. Most of us have not spent enough time with Jesus to know your peculiar means of operation. You know, the Bible says that are compare themselves with themselves. They are not wise. First of all, know yourself. Know yourself in the unction. Know yourself in the anointing. Jesus have, has a thing or two to teach you about what he deposited on your life. You might not be a seer. You may not be a prophet. You might be an evangelist. And there is a bowl of fire that God has placed upon you. And when you pray for some hours, for three hours, you begin to sense the burning. That burning will burn on you for long until Jesus says, okay, do you know the meaning of that burning? Many of you here receive spiritual burnings and baptisms, but you don't know the meaning until the unction opens to teach you. You will never know what it means. But I need to tell you that there are some anointings when they switch on, they, leave, they, are, they litter your body with signs. But it's the unction that will interpret it. And if the unction does not interpret it, it those signs will be wasting. You cannot key into the spiritual realities that are available because the unction has not yet taught you. He said, ye have an unction. You see, a door has opened for me to move from this my teaching and to move into the prophet but i will not enter this one you see are you with me when you grow when you begin to grow then god will begin to give you authority authority to manage atmospheres if you don't have the authority to manage an atmosphere when a window opens like this enter quickly because this is your only ex <laughs> just enter quickly May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why um, it's not every kind of music uh, worship minister I can listen to. Because that's my entry gate into the prophetic. If you bring someone that doesn't know Jesus and he begins to minister, I cannot enter again. He closes all the doors. We are trapped. We are in chains. We are locked up with fetters. And I literally feel trapped when someone that doesn't know Jesus is trying to sing about him. <laughs> if you are fake, I may not know. But if you sing, hey! <laughs> In the book of First Kings, chapter 18, we see an example of the mantle. First Kings chapter 18. The prophet had given some prophetic decrees. If you check it very carefully, his utterance was for 29 seconds. Elijah the Tishbite. And he gave a decree for 29 seconds and locked the heavens over Israel. And put the key in his pocket and walked away. The prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth tried to change his decree, but it was impossible. The king was humbled and had to subscribe to him. And they met on the mountain top in the day that God had ordained to open the heavens. And even though God had ordained to open the heavens, the prophet would have to pray seven units of prayer in order for the hand of God to move over the cloud. As he put in the first unit, he asked the servant to go check the cloud. Because the impact of what he was doing on his knees was going to appear in the heavens. The first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time. And when he went again the seventh time, the Bible says he saw a cloud. A cloud that was like the hand of a man. Before he saw the cloud, he had already counseled the king. He said, go eat and drink. 
saddle your donkey and begin to move because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And when he had heard, do you still remember the day of Pentecost? There was first a sound before there was a move. Before God does anything, he makes a sound first. The reason for which he makes a sound is so that the prophets can pick the frequency and know if there needs to be any arrangement or reorganization that needs to be done. If there is an instruction that needs to come to bring people into alignment before God shows up, they will have that interval. And so he heard the sound of the abundance of rain and he told the king to ride ahead. Then he began to put in the units of prayer. One unit, two, and when the seventh unit was put in, he saw a cloud that was fashioned in the hand of a man. Let me read to you. First Kings chapter 18. Verse 45 and 46. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Ahab's chariot was, was being pulled by six war horses. War horses are 4%, only 4% 4 of the horse family. So it's very difficult to find a war horse. And the war horse is the only horse that is not afraid of fire. He had six of them strapped to his chariot. And they were on top speed heading for Jezreel. 46. And the hand of the Lord, this is a mantle. He came on Elijah. And he guided his loins. And what happened? And ran before the entrance, <laughs> before the chariot. He got to Jezreel before the one that was using four war horses to pull his chariot. It was not this, it was only once in the ministry of Elijah that he had this experience. So mantles are not yours. They are spiritual garments soaked with grace that God borrows you once in a while. The one that, may the Lord give you understanding. The one that is consistent with your calling and consistent with your ministry is the anointing. That one is always available. It's based on covenant, the covenant that God has with you. So if you go and pray and say, Lord, the anointing will come. Because your covenant with the Lord is what occasions the anointing. But the mantle is the Lord. So when he decides, he said, hmm, uh, I need Pastor Dame to disappear from here and appear in Tamale. Then he gives you the mantle that can do that. He borrows you. And so that weight of grace comes upon you that can accomplish something that is not, is, is, is sovereign. Listen to me. God guarantees that you walk in the supernatural. But the spectacular will happen sparingly. You don't build your life based on the spectacular. But you build your life based on the supernatural. So, the operation of mantles are supernatural. They are not within the scope of what you can fit. You now lock yourself up in the room and say, If God doesn't transport you to Tamale, you will not go. You, you'll, be, you'll be there when drive fasting. Because it's not within the scope of what you can manage by faith. Oh my God. Okay. Since you are not here, since you are not. Since. Are you with me? Whereas you can pray and say, God, anoint me. But there's no prayer point that gives you the ground to ask for a mantle. A mantle is sovereign. And if the Lord knows you need it, by an act of his own will, he will make it happen. So that you can perform an act that is supernatural, that is beyond the scope of the expected range of 
that is spectacular, that is beyond the scope of the expected range of the supernatural that God has given us as believers in view of our callings and our ministry. It was only one time in the ministry of Elijah that he was aided by a man too. I don't have time to take you to the book of uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 to show you the technology of a man to hide works. Not today. The hand of the Lord it came upon Elijah. Who knows if the hand of the Lord will come upon you tonight. But one thing is evident. When the hand of the Lord came upon him, he gave him speed. And someone that had established a lead, established an advancement for many years, and then something comes upon you and he gives you speed. You will receive speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, as I try to round up, because this is what uh, the time can take, I need to define what stature is, spiritual stature. Uh, stature. There are some things that God can't do through your life because of your level. Even though God is omnipotent, omni very powerful, but he's not so powerful with you. So there are some things in God that you will need to look for a man that has stature. It is him that God is willing to do such things through. Not because those things are not available, but he can't do it through you because of your level. Are you still there? Okay, let's do Acts chapter 3 verse 6, then I'll shut down. Then you can go study the other matters. Acts 3, 6, quickly. Then Peter said, Pete, silver and gold, I have none. But such as I have, I give thee. Such as I have. That was the token of his stature. Stature is the position of favor that we have before God because we have yielded to his disciplines. By the time you begin to accept the authority of God over your life and you subject yourself to his disciplines, then there are things that he can trust you with in the kingdom. Those things are available, but they are not commonplace. They are only set up for people that are willing to accept the disciplines of God. It's a such as I have. I give you in the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk he was making demand on something that he had with Jesus my question to you today is what do you have with Jesus do you have a secret with Jesus a secret that you can make demands on in the public and Jesus will back you up he had something and just to clear your doubts, he was, that thing was still with him, even though Naira and Kobo, CDs, and what? Pestwest. He was lacking in Pestwest. But that thing was still there. But may, may you not lack CDs. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. But I'm just showing you that he had a challenge in the natural, but it didn't affect what he had in custody in the supernatural and he made a demand on it such as i have so there are things you have from the lord i assure you i have a few i have a few of those things such as i have <laughs> i give you in the name of jesus do you know that this guy this guy this guy didn't say the guy said first he said look on us I know you are looking to heaven. Stop. Look. On us. Silver and gold we do not have. But there is something we have. Such as we have with God. We give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up. And walk. I don't have time to take you to the keys of heaven. He said thou... Simon Bar Jonah, 
you shall be called Kepha. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So there are keys. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth, it shall be. Those are kingdom things. May you be found worthy to be brought into custody of, of deep kingdom. There are dimensions of kingdom things you can receive as inheritance. And it begins to produce money. The things people struggle to get will, will be looking for you. I assure you. They'll be looking for you. You see, when you visit the priest in Nogopok and you tell him you want money, he won't send you to the University of Ghana to economics department. He will ask you to go and bring your daughter. Oh, how is your daughter connected to money? Oh. There are spiritual resources that can be made available. And the things that you are looking for will begin to look for you. Now, he hear me. Prosperity is not something that is lost. Maybe you are trying to find it. It's not lost. Come back home. He says, seek it first. The kingdom of God and this righteousness. And the things that the Gentiles seek will navigate in your direction. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Tonight, you will be clothed. The hand of the Lord will come upon you. And you will be changed into another man. Oh, God of mercy. God of mercy. The hand of the Lord will come upon you. And you will be changed into another man. You know, like I said, as I round up, the Holy Ghost came. The unction was activated. It means God wanted to give me more knowledge. You need spiritual knowledge to get by. If you are going to be a champion, if you are going to be a territorial landlord with what it takes to administer change in the territory, because it's, different, it's a different thing for you to minister to people and it's a different thing for you to minister to territories, to nations. There is a capacity for that kind of delivery. May you desire the big kingdom things in the name of Jesus Christ. There is an anointing that equips you to set up kings. Whereas people are going to the polling post, polling unit, to cast their votes. You can cry, cry in a meeting where there are four people. According to that which I have with Jesus. And the visions that I saw early this morning. The issue of uh, who will rule this country has been decided in heaven. You are still waiting to go to the... <laughs> oh! We seek kingdom men that have stature. That God will give the grace to enter into the corridors where the issues that pertain to the destiny of nations are decided. Men like Melchiah that saw what took place in the throne room those ones are superior to prophets that profess on the streets a time will come when people that just have the gift of prophecy will not have access to the secret because the thing is not yet available in the spirit realm for them to pick then we'll know the people that have access to the throne room senators that are invited into the congregation of witness to see the things that God is doing and to know the things that God is administering from the heavens above. Peter was one of such men. And even though the activities of Pentecost were bound to be mi misunderstood, discredited, they said they were drunk. It took the ministry of an interpreter, a man that knew what had taken place in heaven to bring perspective. He said, the Jesus that you killed, right now in the heavens, God has exalted him. He has been coronated both Lord and Christ. And the evidence of his status and stardom in the spirit is what you see and hear. 
You will need a man that has a way to the throne room to bring perspective. But that, those are issues of stature. Have you found favor with God? Oh, you want a car, you want a Mercedes Benz. Me, I want favor with God. Concerning John the Baptist, it was said that he shall be great in the sight of God. His stature was allocated to him even before he was born. He has a destiny to be great in the sight of God. That is his ordination from heaven. And because of his destiny, his tongue must not touch wine. He must never be acquainted with strong drink because he will be a Nazarite from his mother's womb. <laughs> uh, he had a message for the tax collectors. He had a message for the priest. He had a message for the king. In every aspect of society, he had a witness for them from the rivers of Jordan. You don't know what happened. His father is a priest. Is that not so? But in order for the word of the Lord to come to him, God had to bypass the very, very, very rigid political structure, very rigid religious structure. Let me show you in the book of Luke chapter 3, quickly. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Let me read the scripture to you. Ah, where is my technical man? Let me look for it here. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod the Tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip the Tetrarch of Eturia and of the region of Trachonitis and Licinius the Tetrarch of Abilene. Next verse. That's the political structure. This is the spiritual structure. Annas and Caiaphas being high priests because Annas was the descendant of Aaron. Caiaphas was the political high priest that was elected by Caesar. So they, they were managing two of them, Annas and Caiaphas. This was the political structure that was in place and the religious structure that was in place when God bypassed the political and the religious structure for his word to go to John the Baptist. Where? In the, in the wilderness. When God finds a man that he bequeaths to him stature, he can bypass heavy religious structures in nations. He can bypass heavy structures in government. And the counsel of God can travel to the wilderness because God wanted to set up a different priesthood. A priesthood that will point the nations to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The current polit political structure, the current religious structure lack the stature to point the world to the Son of God. And the word of the Lord, it evaded the high political palaces. It evaded the temple and it went into the wilderness. In this day, God is about to perform another marvel. Yes. You will find his voice again in the manger. You will find his voice in a very small prayer group where the hearts of the people are aligned with heaven. And the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord will come to nameless people, will come to faceless people, people, whose, people in whose families a prophet never rose. When nobody ever said, don't say the Lord, then the word of God will navigate into the wilderness. Oh, there is a new breed without greed that is rising. A radical opposition against unrighteousness. Men that fear God, men that hate sin, and the hand of God will descend upon such men. Great days are upon us. If you're already on your feet, it's time to speak in tongues. Milamoye mm. ite. Isko vilamono. The Lord said, I shall say to Ghana that you are in the season of the second wave of the prophetic. The first wave of the prophetic did not arrive its terminus. It was trapped by men. It was trapped by systems. But in this day, I will occasion 
a second wave of the prophetic move and nameless people and faceless people that will prophesy saying don't say it the Lord God of heaven you will find favor in his sight you will be great in the sight of the Lord people may not know your name but the word of God will come to you in the wilderness. A voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. For the crooked places shall be made straight. The mountains shall be humble. The valleys shall be elevated. The stones shall be gathered out so that all eyes will see the salvation of God. Himalaya Keito Kobinal, Blasco Filani, Skelia Monde, Abaramanteli, Skovite Kopasuminaila, Blasco Filani, Sheki Lopez Kisa Sama Candelia. A little one will become a thousand. A small one will become a strong nation. Though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly increase. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In the 
name of Jesus. First of all, we want to pray for the body of Christ in Ghana. We believe that this is a strategic season for the body. The Lord is coming afresh because he wants to spark up a flame. There are men and women within the auspices of the body of Christ that God is going to find favor with in the days in which we live. And because of that favor, it will cause you to mount up with wings into the palaces of heaven to hear the secrets of the immortals, the whispers of angels, to understand the priesthood of seals and of hidden things in the heavens above. The landscape is going to experience a visitation and the mercy of God will be predominant. Can you pray and say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy upon us. Look kindly upon us. Look upon us with mercy. Choose from among us such men, such women that will bear the higher testimony of the kingdom of God. I know no seek of many men that tell you. They will come upon you like the rain. Some people will be recommissioned tonight. When you go to the Esco Feli, Mono Santeria, when you go to the Malopolis people, men are leaving. It is an appointed time with the Lord. Help your church to see your holy. In the name of Jesus. Second prayer point. The Lord has said again and again that He will raise several women from Ghana. Apostolic women. Lionesses of grace, such as are fashioned after a similitude of a palace. Messengers and prophets in their own right and rank. Women of Zion, the priestesses of the altar. And as even as I speak, his hand comes upon them. The priestesses of the altar. From the nation of Ghana, oh, lionesses, lionesses, apostolic people, and his hand comes, his hand comes mightily, his hand comes mightily, he comes mightily tonight.
of the grace of God shall be kindled in northern Ghana. Many sons of the bond woman will be turned to light. A radical movement of evangelism and conversions will be recorded in the north. The happy men of the north will see the light of the gospel of Jesus. The promises of the idols will be abandoned. The soothsayers will forget their craft. And the armies of the north, from the north shall be many, says the Lord. He will make God speak for himself, an army of northerners, and nothing shall stop them. Endless people will serve him. The tribes of the wilderness that will bow before him. Sorcery shall fail. Witchcraft shall fail. Divination shall fail. But the fire of the Lord will burn in the north. And nothing shall stop it. Nothing shall stop it. Nothing shall stop it. Thank you, Lord. Finally, you want to pray for yourself. And the Lord will open your eyes to know your place in the season that is coming. You have a place. You must know it. The Bible says that each and every one of them shall have knowledge and understanding. God himself will begin to educate. You have a place. You have a place. You have a place. May the Lord open your eyes to know your place in the season that is about to come. Thank 
Anointings are being renewed. They are being activated again. Dormant deposits are coming back to life. Are beginning to speak and to be a witness on the hearts of men. The time has come for the wind of the grace of God to blow afresh over the nation of Ghana. A new breed of intercessors arise from the grassroots nameless praying people from the background and the angels that stirred the land in wisdom we allowed liberty to visit again after many years arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you The strong, the mighty will arise from amidst us. God will commit cities into your hand. He will commit cities into your hands. Grace will be given. The Lord will find favor again in his inheritance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to pray for the sick for the next uh, 20 minutes. And after, we'll pray for the sick. Then such as I have, I, I, I give. The window is already open. There are some of these people that you are seeing and many more that you will yet see. Something will open on their lives. Something will open on their lives. Like it opened on my life 20 something years ago. Let's go be loud. Thank you. You see, you see, many angels have been released into this um, auditorium. Activations are taking place. Activations are taking place already. Let 
33 is being disarmed. The demons are being chained as I speak. The captives of Satan will be set at liberty tonight. Thank you, Father. Oh, oh. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Follow my instructions from this moment, please. Follow the instructions very carefully. First instruction. If you have a sick relative or a sick friend that is not here, maybe the person is in the north, central region, Ashanti, you can pick up your phone and call the person. And then allow your phone to be running while I pray. The Lord will give the person a miracle. He respect, if the person is in Los Angeles, just call. Then leave the phone while I pray. Second instruction. If you came here with deafness, maybe in one ear, take this finger, put it in the ear that cannot hear, and block it. Don't change until I say change. You came with someone that is totally deaf, cannot hear. Put these two fingers inside of the person's ear. You came with a crippled person. If you are crippled, you use a cane, you use a crutch. Lay your hands on the leg that is defective. And when I tell you to stand up, stand up. You brought someone with cancer. Put your hand where the cancer is. You have a growth. Put your hand where it is. You have a fibroid. Try to look for where it is sitting. And just touch it. Are you blind? Put your hands on your hand. Short-sighted. Long-sighted. Remove your spectacles and put your hands on the hand. Make the call. Make the call quickly. Don't worry. The yokes of darkness will be breaking as we, as we progress. And Jesus will walk this place. This evening. Make the call quickly. Those few credits you are going to spend will be the reason for which God will bring deliverance to the person. If I say in the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. See, that amen is weak. Let me tell you why I say so. When you say amen, my spiritual eyes will open. And I will be able to see people with serious problems. And I will do it seven times. In the name of Jesus. Amen. somebody in this place a lady and you are normally fed in the night you are fed people come to feed you in the night and it's it's embarrassing and you want that thing to stop you can come now you are fed they bring food to give you in the night Come quickly. Holy Ghost fire fall everywhere. Oh, oh, oh fire. Holy Ghost fire fall. I know oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire fall everywhere. Oh, oh, oh fire. Holy Ghost fire. I destroy that witchcraft. Loser. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost, fire.
Lose her. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost, fire burn everywhere. Now, listen, oh, listen. I'm, I'm still seeing someone. Oh, my. Holy Ghost, fire. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. There's someone here, you are in business, and once upon a time, you were given something to help your business. This thing I'm talking about was an aid from the kingdom of darkness. You were given something. It was supposed to help you with your business. But instead of helping you right now, you are on a standstill. If you are not ashamed to say you are the one and you come, I will give you something for your business. And this one will work. I will just bless you. You were given something to help you. But the thing has grounded you. Where are you? If you are the one, show me your hands. You were given something. Where is the person? You were given something for your business. Instead of help you, the thing has grounded you. If you are not ashamed, I will help you. If you are not ashamed, I will help you. But if you are ashamed, we can leave it. In the name of Jesus! I'm seeing demons that are stealing somebody's thoughts. Such that you forget easily, easily, easily. bring that lady for me. You, why are you out there? Okay, I should give you food. Your thoughts. Demons steal your thoughts. Where are the people that demons steal their thoughts? You forget easily. And you wonder why you forget like that. Okay. You, are you the one for the business? Who is the one for the business? Business person, your window has closed. Don't come again. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Restore. You are the business. Why are you coming now? You are off. Okay. Forgetfulness and the food. Father, in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke. Ah. Ah. Okay, it's coming out. Don't worry, it's coming out. Holy Ghost fire, burn. It's coming out. Don't worry. Leave her. Let her go. Holy Ghost fire, burn. Oh. Ah, yes. Fire, yes, it's coming out. Yeah, why are you here? Why are you here? Forgetfulness. Lucy. If I touch you, you can go. That is if you can go. If you can move, you can move. Those demons are hereby paralyzed. If I touch you, you can go. Why did you, what did you collect the charm for, that thing? 
say salt. They gave you something like salt. Salt, salt. And they're eating salt. So that I was spraying the food for them. Sprinkle it in front of your shop. So what happened? Nothing happened. <laughs> now let me bless you. And in six months, you will see what will happen. Don't look for. See, see, listen to me. Why are you people here? No, it's not true. It's not true. It's not. It's not true. Where's John? Don't waste time. Just touch them. For business too. So where were you? He was up. Okay, come. Just touch them. Just touch them. Where's other men? Just touch. Please. Once you are touched, go back. Two of you come here. I'll give you something from Jesus. Repent. Can you tell Jesus, I'm so sorry for taking something to help me? Repent. Talk to him now. Repent. Repent. Lord, have mercy on my brothers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now I ask, Lord, if it will please you, show him that you are the only one that can bless. For the blessings of the Lord, he make it rich, and he added no soul. Show him a sign. Show him a sign. Show him a sign. The blessings of the Lord, he make it rich, and added no soul. No sorrow is added to it. Six months, you people will see. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every sickness, every pain, every affliction, every disease in the name of Jesus Christ. I address the afflictions of those that are calling in through the phone, those that are online. Satan, remove your hand. Remove your hand. Remove your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the yoke of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deathly spirits be bound. Be bound. Come out of the ears in the name of Jesus Christ. Blinding spirits be bound. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. I cast every growth. Every tumor is cast in the name of Jesus. Every fibroid cast in the name of Jesus. And I cause cancer. Cancer. Hear my voice. 
I arrest you, demon of cancer. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your yoke break. Let your yoke break. Let your yoke break. Hey. I'm seeing a demon on someone's neck. The hand of God will come upon the person shortly. There's a demon on your neck. I'm seeing it in the spirit. And the Lord breaks that yoke. He breaks the yoke. He breaks the yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Every form of paralysis, I arrest you. Pains, untold pains, running from the spinal cord. I arrest that pain and I break the yoke in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm seeing someone lying on the bed. Maybe one of the people that you call, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. The hand of God is strong tonight. So Satan be gone in the name of Jesus. Somebody that cannot sleep. Your night moments are, are, are terrible. Now I break the yoke of that demon of restlessness. In the name of Jesus. Someone came here with intense pain. I banish that pain from your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! Okay, the healings have started. They have started now. Someone healed from the back. Yes, the tension on your back just left. I command that tumor to disappear. Let the tumor disappear. Let the growth dry up. Let it dry up. Fibroid, die. Like Salima, Rabos, Kemola. For those that came with point of contact, pictures of people and all of that, Lord, I ask for deliverance. Bring deliverance. Bring deliverance. Bring deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, somebody's ears are open. I can see that in the spirit. Here, yeah, here, yeah. in the name of Jesus. So he's walking in our midst. I will do this for two minutes so that I can give you what I came with. If I'm not successful in giving it out. Okay, those of you that called somebody, please call them. Talk to them now. Talk to them. If you find out that the person's condition has changed, come out. Talk to them now. Talk to them now. Check your body now. Check your body now. Quickly, check it now. If you notice a change, you can come out. We'll take five testimonies, just five. And then I will give you what I have. Five, just five. You can check now. You can check. Check on the phone and check your physical body. You have liberty to do what you could not do before. So if you could not walk, there's somebody online that cannot walk. Rise up. Walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, wait. This is where testimony people come this way. Leave the aisle so that you go. Come, come this way. If you record a testimony, you can come down here. Yes, Bishop John C. W. What's happening here? Yes, sir. This is a testimony from the sister. The sister, the sister had pain on the right leg. Where is she? 
Where is your sister? Volta region. Volta region. Volta region, sir. As soon as you finish praying for her, the sister claims that her leg, the pain has left completely. All right, so God, God sent a healing to Volta. Hallelujah. Brother, come. I want to use you as a point of contact to reach your sister. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that you grant that her miracle will be permanent. Let it be permanent. Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name. You are released. Amen. Someone healed on the back. You came here with a excruciating pain on the back and God has relieved it. There's someone's ear that was cut. Ear. Ear. Yes? Jan, what, what's happened there? Uh, he, he had, he was diagnosed of glaucoma. Glaucoma. So he couldn't read without his glasses. Couldn't read without his glasses. But now he can read. Okay, he can read now. Come. Come. For how long have you been in this condition? Um, for about um, two months now. And for about two? Yes, and then they said that um, even Tuesday, coming Tuesday, I'm supposed to do my final examination with them, and then they will put me on drugs. Okay, they are supposed to put him on drugs for life, beginning from this Tuesday after the final examination. But Jesus has met him. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's up? Oh, it is accomplished. Go for the test. I want them to know that uh, Jesus practices mercy. Hallelujah. Sir, his wife, Elizabeth, she's in Birmingham right now. She's in Birmingham, United he, Kingdom. Yes, he made a phone call, and as she prayed, she had a condition, and she was bleeding in her stomach. She was so bleeding much pain. in her stomach. She was lying down. Lying down. The moment you say, if you are sick on your bed, rise up. Rise and be healed. And the pain left instantly. Okay. Right there in Birmingham. Come. You know, I know somebody in the communication thinks that I came in the night to look for this brother in the night. Say, okay, you are going to testify. Have, have we met before? I have not met him. So I don't know him. And your wife is in Birmingham. Yes, please. She was lying down. Yes, she was lying down in the bed. And, so and then what happened? So, um, you, you indicated that um, any, if the person lying down in bed sick should get up and be healed. And so she sends me a message on WhatsApp indicating that she no more feels the pain. She got up. Lord, we use him as a point of contact to reach his wife. And we decree it is permanent in the name of Jesus. You are released. Excuse me, sir. Yes. This is a major case. Okay. The mother had had miscarriages, two miscarriages. Okay. And due to those miscarriages, she was bedridden for a very long time. She could not be able to stand because of the pain. After the prayer you made, the mother now, as we are talking, is jumping on her feet. Jumping the pain as well. Now, where's the mom? Where is your mom? Where is your mom? In the house. Where? Where? In, in, in Accra? Kumasi, sir. In Kumasi. Yes, sir. How much is the transport fare to Kumasi? Yeah? 60 CDs. Jesus is powerful. Hallelujah. Come. We use you as a point of contact to reach your mom. And we demand that her case be perfected. In Jesus' mighty name. Meanwhile, have we met before? Did I meet you in the night? No, please. You come? Okay. All right. These days we need to do that because um, the Lord give you understanding. Okay, yes. The boat came in with excruciating back pain. Okay, excruciating back pain. I like the word they were against that. Okay, they are healed. Come this way, quickly. It's permanent. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. I'm looking for the ear. Ear. Um, the man online that is checking what is happening online, please find out if there's an ear condition. Then I will stop. Ear. Yes, quickly. What's happening? The brother there? had an eye challenge an after eye? you. Your, his father had an eye challenge. His father had a, Where's your father? It's in Tema. 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 Okay. 
Immediately you made a prayer and you told people with issues of eye. The father right now can see and it's more than a year. Yes, he can see now. Come. All the way to Tema. Okay, the hand of God that is on you is on your father too. It means that the father's healing is not yet complete, so there is a, a release of a consignment to perfect it. Yes? What happened? If his auntie had a growth in her stomach. A growth in her stomach. And she was slated for a surgery. Slated for a surgery? With so much pain. So pain. much pain. And at the word, she said instantly the pain left. The pain left. And she felt that she's healed. Where's your auntie? She's at, the, at Cape Coast. What's the transport fare to, to Cape Coast? 40 cities. 40 cities. Okay. Come. That's how much in Naira? 4,000. Yeah. Yes, the healing is perfected. Yes? Okay. Uh, they called a friend of his from Volta region. Volta region? Who had problem. He couldn't Eye look problem. into the light and migraine. Yeah. Instantly at the word, the migraine left and he could look into the light and the and eyes restored. Healed. In the Volta. Come. Perfect it. Okay, yeah. It's perfect. Go. The both of them, back pain and migraine, completely Back pain, two of you come. Climb, step up, step up. Um, there's one of you that God wants to give something. So stand here, two of you stand. And we'll, we will know which of you the Lord wants to anoint, but he wants to anoint one of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, that one that you want to anoint among these two people, I ask that you stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. And let the oil begin to pour. Stretch forth your hand from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Become stronger. Become stronger. Come stronger. Come stronger. Today your spirit opens up. When you pray, you will see. When you study your Bible, you will understand. The Lord opens you up with grace. With grace. Yes, it is done. It is done. Grace and mercy. Yes? Okay, she called her friend having an eye problem. Having an eye problem? And body pain. Mm -hmm. And it said at the prayer, he was instantly healed. Where's your friend? Hmm? In Accra. Come, let's find out if he's healed. Step up. Look at me. Okay, your friend is healed. It's true. Wait, wait, wait. Come. I beheld in the spirit an angel of the Lord. Just raise your hand like this. Oh, so he descends on you. Descends. Full equipment. From today, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Her yes. friend was instantly healed of chest pain after the prayer. Instantly healed of chest pain. What's your friend? In what? Sunyani. Where is that? Sunyani. It's in Accra? No. Okay, that place. The healing went to that place. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Sir, this is a unique case. This okay, lady what? was brought here by this gentleman with an issue of bipolar. Communication was very minimal, extremely minimal. That's a mental issue? Yes, sir. After you called out the issue of healing, she is now, when you ask her her name, she is able to respond, number Wait, one. Let's... Yeah. Step up, step up, step up. Isco Felama Bafalis Ovresco a Villa Manto Scafula a Sali Cabrai Toco Felama. I cast out the demon of his sanity and I restore your mind. Satan, 
leave. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let your true mind be restored. Let the voice that deceives leave your soul. Leave her. In the name of Jesus. Great. So you can communicate with her now. Okay, his mother was healed. She had an accident before that affected her left leg. She, he had an accident that affected her left leg. With so much pain and injury, affected her posture. Affected her posture. But after the prayer, the pain is left, and now she can stand upright. She can stand straight. upright. <laughs> upright. The last meeting I went for before I came here, I asked the people, I said, we have an, a healing service in the night. Can you go to the streets if you find a mad person? Use a chain and chain the person forcefully and bring it. And one woman, believe me, and she saw the madman of the city that walks up and down. I don't know how she did it, but she brought the woman. She got it. Oh, you, you, you were there. He was there. He was the first person to be healed. So, there is no madman left in that city. Because the moment he got healed, his mind was restored. And I asked him, how far have you gone with school? He said, I left the 100 level. I left the 100 level. And someone from, from Canada was, was watching. I said, okay, I take up his school fees. So, he got a sponsor. Some of you don't have sponsors. The, the guy found a sponsor. Now, we can't take all of this. Let's, uh, I'm looking for the ear. Where's the ear man? Uh, online people, have you found my ear man? Yeah? You found him? Okay, it's online. Somewhere there. C come, tell us about that ear man. Yes? Josiah, step up here. Let us hear from you. One Theophilus online Facebook. Theophilus on Facebook. He says one of his ear was blocked. One of his ear was blocked. Right, but when the prayer came, when the prayer came, it has been opened. Okay. The ear popped, popped open. <laughs> Guess what happened to her? So this is a this is a mental issue. A mental as soon issue. as you started teaching, she was speaking to herself. The mother and the brother is here. After you made a prayer call, right now, if you ask her her name, she is able to respond. Come. In the name of Jesus the righteous. Satan, leave her. Go. Receive your pure mind. How are you? How are you? All right. She's fine. <laughs> now, what's your name? He said to be a comfort. Where's the mom? Come. And you are the sister? Where's the sister? Okay, brother. I want to give one of you something. I don't know. Can you receive it? I want to give you something. For Father, let your grace rest upon her. She suffered for so many years. So let grace come to compensate her mind. It's coming. To compensate for your soul. Yes. From today, I shut the voice that speaks in your soul. Be restored in your right mind.
Jesus' name. Amen. Go, you will prosper. Now, such as I have, I give you. The reason why I came here is because there are three women. Three women here. Three ladies. You'll be clothed. So much grace will be given to you. The hand of God will come strong. The spirit of God will come strong on you. He's actually coming as I speak. The hand of God will come so mighty, so strong, so powerful. A new chapter is about to open in your life. And he sent me to proclaim it. So the hand of God comes upon you. It comes strong upon you. It comes strong. It comes strong. Yes. It changes your story. It changes your story. Changes your story. Oh, there is restoration. There's restoration. I see the, the Bible open. There's a young man here. When you teach the scriptures, people will travel from different places to come listen to you. And the anointing will descend upon you. See what you will see what happens in the next six months, sister. The things that were forgotten will, will be remembered. There are five people here, and the fire, the fire of an evangelist will come burning on you to come so strong on you, to come so strong on you, to come strong, it will come strong on you, to come strong. Holy Ghost fire. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost, fire. Five people, five people. Fire, Holy Ghost, fire. Oh, fire. There is a sister Holy I'm looking for, and the hand of God will come upon her. There is a sister. It comes at the count of seven. One, two. So you need to hear this testimony. Okay, what happened there? The sister had stroke on the left part. Stroke on the left three part. three years. Three years. The brother is... After the prayers, as we are talking now, the sister is live on the phone. She, she she's is live. moving. She's moving. Moving, completely moving. Alamo, <laughs> Kebi. <laughs> oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire. someone here there is a grace it's coming stronger it's coming strong it's coming strong it's coming strong it's a grace for restoration it's a grace for restoration it's coming stronger it's like a wind it's like a wind it's like a wind it's coming stronger it's coming stronger coming stronger coming stronger it's like a wind it's like a wind it's like a wind it's like a wind a wee. It's like a wee. Oh. Oh. The Lord 
God's visitation comes to you. And he will show you a sign in two weeks. It's like a wind of grace. Like a wind of grace. Like a wind. Like a wind. Like a wind of grace. Like a wind. There are, there, are, there are two people here, two, two of you, two, two people, Lord, show me, two, two, it's coming, stronger, two, it's coming, stronger, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Okay, somebody up there, there'll be an, act. okay, there are actually two, two of you, there'll be an activation of the prophetic seed that is on your spirit, it comes at the count of seven, one, two. Stronger. Four. Stronger. Five. Six. Yeah. There are two of you. There are still two of you. It's on two of you. It's on two of you. It's coming stronger. So strong. So strong. So strong. So strong. Holy Ghost. the Lord is coming. He, he wants to walk in our midst. He is coming. He's moving now. He's moving everywhere. The Lord is now walking. He's now moving. He's now moving. He's now moving. The Lord is now moving.
are seven seers. People that will see the visions of God. And the anointing comes upon seven seers. It comes strong, it comes strong. Seven seers. Seven of them. Seven of them. Seven of them. Upstairs, downstairs, there are seven. As you pray, you will see what God is doing. Oh, okay, there is someone, and the Lord is going to make you competent in the deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry. And literal fire will catch will catch up with you. One, two, three. Grace comes upon. There's a minister of the gospel, but you are hiding somewhere. You are not close to the front. The Lord wants to promote you, and his hand will come upon you now. So come strong upon you. You cannot resist it. If you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's time to pray. 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 Holy God! people from the north, any part of the north, five. If you can come here, come quickly. Ushers, if we have five, we stop the rest. Just five. We need one lady, one lady, any lady, come quickly. From the north. That is six. Okay. Okay, if you have, if you have reached there, just remain there. Lord, if it is true. No, you are late. Where did you come from? Up or down? Back. Okay. It's all right. If it is true that the Lord wants to visit the north, he will confirm it. Lord, if it is true that you want to visit the north, show me a sign here. These are the northerners. These are the northerners. These are the northerners. Show me a sign. 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 Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! That you begin to do something. Your hand will begin to move. Your mighty hand will move in the north. Let it begin with these ones here. The fire, the flame. Let it begin with them. Can we pray for the north right now? And disarm that region from sorcery, from witchcraft, from darkness, from divination. The Lord comes. The Lord comes. So lift up your hands, oh you guys. I'm 
To know more about Apostle Arome Osai and his ministry, Remnant Christian Network, kindly visit at rcnglobal.org and follow us on social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Apostle Arome Osai or call plus 234-8060-508888. God bless you.